Hey, uh, so here's something that will make you feel pretty bad if you're of a certain vintage. The PS3 isn't far off turning 20 years old. Games like Heavenly Sword, Haze and Genji aren't far off being classed as antiques, come to think of it. So here's this giant enemy crab. It was never really appreciated properly in its time, but it's fair to say that people are now beginning to understand the initially very expensive fuss when it comes to the PlayStation 3. Sony had some big shoes to fill following the success of the PlayStation 2, shoes that they initially struggled to fill. Though the PS2 wasn't a technical marvel by 2006 when the PlayStation 3 first launched, its extensive library of successful titles really drove the continued popularity of the second generation PlayStation. As belated and difficult as it was, Sony's third console did eventually find its own success in new and returning intellectual properties, along with some hardware revisions. With that in mind, the following 20 titles showcase the best PS3 games around. They take us from the depths of space to the peaks of Olympus, through adventures of treasure seeking and deception to the scandals of the Wild West. It's an eclectic mix of games, all with one very distinct thing in common. They represent the very best of Sony's third gaming console. We're limiting ourselves to just one entry per franchise just to stop repetition and to make things a little bit more spicy. Number 20, Resistance 2. Though the first Resistance game, Fall of Man, fared well for a launch title, it was the sequel that better showcased what Insomniac and the PS3 were capable of. After Army Ranger Sergeant Nathan Hale finds himself in the precarious situation of being infected by the Chimera virus and saving England, he re-enters the fray, this time taking the battle to the United States after a Chimera invasion. Resistance 2 better use its environments than the original, putting players in the middle of small town America. The result is a focused action title that throws hordes of different Chimera at the player, some, like the Grim, creating short horror segments. Utilising his Chimera powers, players manoeuvre Hale through his second encounter with a relentless extraterrestrial force. Technically more impressive and visually better than Fall of Man, Resistance 2 fleshed out a more engaging story that made players excited for the series' concluding chapter. Go on Sony, make another Resistance game, I dare you. Double dog dare ya. Go on. 19. Alien Isolation Amanda Ripley is on a mission. Discover the truth behind her mother's disappearance. When the flight recorder of the Nostromo shows up, it's too much for Amanda to resist, so she travels to the Sevastopol space station to retrieve the log. When she arrives, she finds a desolate station and soon learns that man isn't the most feared thing in the galaxy. Alien Isolation was everyone's introduction to a solid, capable horror game involving H.R. Geiger's Xenomorph. The extraterrestrial giant that scurries throughout the space station is a relentless foe that can't be taken down by any of Amanda's tricks and gadgets. It's a race to escape the Sevastopol station before becoming another victim of the alien threat. Not since Alien have we had a reason to fear the Xenomorph, but Creative Assembly brought the iconic villain back in terrifying form. Some things, like Android Foe, can bog down the experience a little bit, but overall Alien Isolation is a successful horror title that expands upon a beloved film universe and it deserves a second game. Number 18, Little Big Planet 2. Ah, the lovable Sackboy. Where the original Little Big Planet introduced us to his physics-based world, Little Big Planet 2 expands upon it with new challenges, new friends, and a level customised that allowed players to create full-on gaming experiences, such as an in-depth first-person shooter. Little Big Planet 2 thrived on co-op multiplayer, which took players through an extensive story full of physics-based puzzles and ample frustration. Still though, the charm of the series made it impossible to stay mad at it, especially when you could take your frustration out on your friends. Angry that you can't get past a level? Give your partner a slap or drag them off to the death. It's a pretty good stress reliever. Little Big Planet 2 was many things wrapped up into a colourful and playful package, perfect for players of all ages, slapping notwithstanding. It probably wouldn't do amazingly well these days considering the kind of game they'd like to publish, but we'd love to dabble with more LBP on the PS5. Number 17, Deus Ex Human Revolution. In a not too distant future, Deus Ex Human Revolution sets up a world where human augmentation is commonplace. At the forefront of the latest stories in the Deus Ex series is Adam Jensen, a former chief of security force to undergo augmentation after being left for dead. When a squad of augmented terrorists known as the Tyrants crash a party for Saraf Industries' latest augmentation, Jensen finds himself at the centre of a conspiracy that will force him to choose sides. Utilising the latest in augmentation technology, Jensen can literally turn himself into a super soldier. Deus Ex Human Revolution allows players to tackle the game as they wish, either as a gun-toting action hero or a stealth operative that relies on cunning and technology to outsmart his enemies. 
The ability to choose between augmentations allows players to craft their own story as they guide Jensen for a world divided by the very augments that keep him alive. It's been many years since the last Deus Ex game, so here's hoping it isn't too many more before we hear Jensen's gruff voice once again. Number 16, Journey. Not every good game needs to arm you to the teeth and set you out against hordes of terrifying monsters. As Journey proved, sometimes it's just about getting from point A to point B. Across a vibrant world filled with visual wonders, that game company sends players on a uh, um, journey that is surprisingly emotionally taxing. That is largely thanks to the incredible musical score, which was composed by Austin Wintory. Journey features incredibly simple gameplay, but remains entirely engaging. The game isn't about running from an impossible enemy or solving pretty tricky puzzles. It's all about the journey, which is stunning and is sure to stick with players long after they've completed it. Along the way, players may come across others that pop in and out of their game, though their interaction is limited to musical chimes and their PSN ID is hidden. It's a seemingly shallow multiplayer mechanic, but one that allows you to share this experience with another person in a surprisingly emotional way. Let this game hit you right in the feels and hit you hard. Number 15, Dead Space. In space, nobody can hear you get torn apart by the horrifying, mutated, reanimated corpses of the crew of the USG Ishimura. As the voiceless systems engineer Isaac Clarke, players are introduced to a 26th century universe of space travel, planet cracking and intergalactic colonisation. All of that is fascinating and serves as a great backdrop for Dead Space, but it only takes about 10 minutes into exploring the Ishimura, a planet cracking mining ship, to realise something terrifying will overshadow all of it. The Necromorph are a unique entity that aren't easily killed by conventional means. Sure, you can upload a clip into them and eventually drop them, but to avoid their very grotesque and deadly features, you'll need to dismember them limb by limb. Dead Space's combat is the best of survival horror, forcing players to land perfectly aimed shots all while shaking with fear as a once-human monstrosity scurries towards them. Dead Space is a masterful display of sound design as the Ishimura comes to life with the fiends of space inhabiting every nook and cranny. Its remake is also pretty damn good too, stupid bathroom controversy notwithstanding. Number 14, Portal 2. Valve intrigued players with a simple yet still complex concept of the original Portal. As a test subject named Chell equipped with the experimental portal gun, players must pass a series of logic and physics tests at the behest of the supercomputer GLaDOS. Portal 2 expands upon that concept with more complex puzzles that Chell once again must tackle in the single player campaign. While the original Portal had only a one player mode, Valve took the necessary steps to add a multiplayer component to Portal 2. The result is a game that surpasses the ingenuity of its predecessor with a heaping of content added with the two player experience. There's no denying that the campaign is a worthy successor to Portal, with GLaDOS returning and a new robot weekly adding to Chell's predicament. It's the multiplayer, however, that shines. Cooperation and communication are the only ways to succeed in each level, which can either lead to feelings of accomplishment or chaotic hilarity. There's pretty much no in-between. Be sure to pick up the orange box and check it out along with all of Valve's other best games on PS3. Number 13, Batman Arkham City. After stopping the Joker's antics in Arkham Asylum, Batman embarks on one of his longest nights in Gotham, or should we say Arkham City. With the Asylum in shambles and villains running free, Gotham's finest opt to wall off an entire portion of the city, creating the titular location for arguably Batman's best action adventure. I mean, it's definitely better than Gotham Knights. Arkham City is proof that sometimes bigger is better. As the Dark Knight plays square off against his worst enemies, the Clown Prince of Crime among them. Featuring a bigger roster of Gotham's most dangerous criminals than Arkham Asylum, Arkham City is a robust title with plenty of content. From the Riddler's trophies to Joker teeth, there are 400 collectibles to find in between pummeling henchmen. Despite the more open environment of Arkham City, Batman is still a master of stealth and keeper of some of the coolest gadgets. Sonic batarangs, electrical charges, smoke pellets, explosive gels and bat claws are just a few of the tools the Cape Crusader has at his disposal, each one serving a unique purpose in his quest to do what he does best. Beat up bad guys and save the people of Gotham. Number 12, Metal Gear Solid 4, Guns of the Patriots. After snaky uh, amazed Metal Gear Solid fans, Guns of the Patriots was left with some pretty big shoes to fill. Much like with Snake Eater, early previews of the fourth numbered Metal Gear Solid confused fans. Who was the Burt Reynolds looking character being introduced and how did he fit into the narrative? Were we continuing the saga of Big Boss or was it time for Solid Snake to return to the spotlight? 
The answer we got was a depressing one, and continued to show fans that there was no happy-go-lucky ending in store for Kojima's beloved series. Old Snake was designed with many of the tropes we expected from aging battle-hardened warriors. Except, unlike The Expendables where it's worked in for laughs, it's incredibly tragic and saddening. Watching Snake become a decrepit, broken old man is like watching a legend wither away into nothing. Guns of the Patriots was pretty bonkers though, even compared to Snake Eater, and really had far too much story to explain with too little gameplay to properly balance it out, but it was a very solid Metal Gear Solid game nonetheless. The plot takes some twists and turns that fit right into Kojima's zany storytelling, but it's a fitting conclusion to Solid Snake's Metal Gear Solid saga with some of the most memorable moments this series has ever seen. As a wise man once said, this is good innit? Number 11, Assassin's Creed 2. There are, what, 400 Assassin's Creed games out there by now? And yet, somehow, the second game in the series, which released in 2009 and fixed many of the issues of its predecessor, remains not only the best in the series, but one of the best games on the PS3. Ubisoft had many opportunities to recreate the awe and wonder of Assassin's Creed 2, but it hasn't quite hit the mark yet. Ezio Auditore has remained an icon of the Assassin's Guild. Ever since Assassin's Creed 2, his name has popped up frequently, especially among fan murmuring with every subsequent new release. The stars aligned for Assassin's Creed 2, which was the perfect mix of action, parkour, exploration and story. Even with more recent titles that deviate from the series' core format, the second game remains at the very top of the AC pile. The expansive world and bounty of side quests made it difficult not to fall in love with Ezio's adventure, which felt like the first real introduction to the skills of the Assassins. Set during the Renaissance, the cast was rounded off with historic faces like Leonardo da Vinci and Niccolo Machiavelli, which added just another fun quirk to an already great game. Number 10, Uncharted 2 Among Thieves With each new adventure, Nathan Drake faces worse odds and bigger set pieces. While Uncharted 3 and the final game in the Nathan Drake saga, A Thief's End, did well to stay true to this model, Among Thieves remains Drake's most unforgettable and best adventure yet. Uncharted 2 returns Nathan Drake to his life of adventuring, joined by father figure Victor, Sully Sullivan, and a cast of colourful characters. He's since moved on from the fortune of Sir Francis Drake and the lost city of El Dorado, and is instead seeking the fabled Sintamani Stone. It wouldn't be a Nathan Drake adventure, however, if he didn't run into some trouble. A whole mess of trouble. While Among Thieves is far from the most technically impressive of the series, especially now two generations on, there are so many incredible moments that it's arguably the most memorable entry in the whole series. Naughty Dog did of course try, but it never could match the thrill of the train segment, though it did come pretty close with the sinking ship in Uncharted 3. Uncharted 2 was the perfect mix of action, drama and adventure, earning it a spot as one of the PS3's best ever games. Is it the best Uncharted game ever? We still think so. Number 9, Persona 5. The Persona series has had its ups and downs, but the PS3 release of Persona 5, which also more famously came out on the PS4, is one of the best entries. It also happens to be one of those must-play titles to grace the console during its 9-year lifespan. How do we know this? It's been years since the game released, and the protagonist Joker is still finding work, most recently as a fighter in Super Smash Bros Ultimate as well as in spin-off game, Strikers. The Shin Megami and Persona series are off-the-wall role-playing games, and Persona 5 is really no different in that sense. It's an attractive title with a fun art style that makes it feel like you're playing through a vibrant living manga. Text bubbles and audio cues pop onto the screen during exploration, creating a sort of welcomed mayhem that helps bring the world to life. You'll spend plenty of time meandering through high school as Joker, which breaks up the insane screen-cluttering turn-based combat. Persona 5 is definitely not a game for everyone though. Role playing elements can get pretty deep and the combat can be a kind of chaotic mess, but that all feels right at home in the Persona series and can be pretty easy to get used to. And when you're not dealing with the trials and tribulations of high school life, you're battling demons and other baddies in surprisingly fast paced combat that continues to improve upon a decade old series that's only now really getting its time in the sun. Number 8, Dark Souls. Pegged as one of the most difficult video game series ever to be developed, so many people will not get to experience the underlying fun of Dark Souls before being scared away by it. Sure, it's a challenging series that requires plenty of patience and timing, but that level of meticulous gameplay adds to the overall entertainment. Dark Souls greatly improves upon the model from its spiritual predecessor, Demon Souls. Mechanically, it tries a lot of the similar ideas, though it is visually more impressive. 
Multiplayer elements include a cooperative mode where players can be summoned into another game or a PvP competitive mode. Although Dark Souls 2 did improve upon the fluidity of combat in some areas, there is a lot about the original Dark Souls that helps it shine as a PS3 classic. Arguably better level design and a more interesting story drive the need to press on through the taxing combat, which requires the restraint to not run and gun throughout each level. Dark Souls can be punishing, but the reward is an impressive PS3 title that spawned a series of successes and Bloodborne. One of the most popular exclusives on the PS4 that really deserves a patch, please Sony give it to us, as well as Elden Ring, already one of the greatest games ever made ever. That being said though, it also made every single slightly difficult game get compared to it for the rest of the time, so maybe its legacy isn't exactly spotless. Number 7, God of War 3. The God of War original trilogy ends with this PS3 release, pitting Kratos against the gods of Olympus one last time. The result is a proper follow-up to the PS2 and PSP entries, complete with improved graphics, gameplay and set pieces. God of War 3 expands the scope of the series' mythology, once again pitting the God of War against titans, gods and mythical creatures pulled straight from Grecian mythology. Santa Monica isn't shy with the franchise's staple gore and violence, ensuring that the Spartan Warrior is coated in a thick layer of his enemy's blood by the game's final act. God of War 3 is the original conclusion to Kratos' story that he deserved and had been fighting for. While we could cut, pound and rip through Kratos' foe forever, the game was a monumental experience that, once played, is impossible to forget, especially that incredible opening sequence. From stunning visuals to incredible boss battles, God of War 3 delivers an ending befitting the Ghost of Sparta, before of course he was reborn as a grumpy dad who just wanted to put his feet up and watch the darts before other gods started showing up at his door. Leave the man alone. He only done a little bit of genocide. A little bit of genocide. Number 6. Mass Effect 2 Before players started to find reasons to turn against Bioware and Electronic Arts, the combo was churning out video game masterpieces like Mass Effect 2. Space drama has never been so exciting in the follow-up to Commander Shepard's unforgettable introduction. Speaking of introductions, it's kinda hard to top the main character dying in the first five minutes, huh? For Mass Effect 2, Bioware took a glance at the complaints players had about the original and tweaked the formula a little to make it less clunky and more accessible, and about 90% less driving around a Mako. Those that played through the original Mass Effect were able to continue the story of their version of Shepard through imported save games. The narrative of the Mass Effect series stayed strong throughout the end of the sequel, leading into the slightly underwhelming conclusion to the trilogy in Mass Effect 3. However, Mass Effect 2 was filled with plenty of drama and action that helped propel Shepard's story forward. The return of a morality meter let players mould Shepard into an intergalactic hero or a cold-hearted renegade, which led to drastic changes in character interaction and arc conclusions. Mass Effect 2 is satisfying all around, from smoother gameplay to a deeper, more intricate story, making it an undeniably worthy entry on this best of PS3 list. Number 5, The Last of Us. So nice they released it thrice. From the opening moments to the game's unexpected conclusion, The Last of Us is Neil Druckmann at his absolute best. There are admittedly some viable critiques about the gameplay, such as Crouch walking around and picking everything up from 10 minutes at a time, but The Last of Us is narrative perfection, headlined by two very different characters voiced by two very talented artists. When Joel progressively takes on the task of ferrying Ellie, a young girl found to be immune to the mutated Cordyceps strain, to a rebel militia in search of a cure, it opens the door for a survival horror game that's driven by drama and not scares. Their path blocked by a horde of infected and merciless bandits, the duo face impossible odds that help bring them closer together. The Last of Us frequently switches pace from slow-paced horror to action-packed shootouts, creating a blend of the two genres that helps portray the horrors of the post-apocalyptic world. There are so many unforgettable moments in this incredible PS3 game, but there's no forgetting that heartbreaking opening segment. And the world's least necessary remake ever didn't take away any of the original's power either. Well, maybe it did a little bit if you were playing on PC at launch, mind you. Number 4, Bioshock. In the depths of the ocean sits a city intended to break free from the chains of the surface world. First constructed in the 1940s, the underwater city of Rapture was to be a utopia where people could live without the lingering oppressive rule of government. By the time the protagonist of Bioshock finds his way down to the since decimated city, the vision of creator Andrew Ryan has deteriorated into a horrifying version of itself. When scientists came across Adam, a DNA altering genetic material, it doomed Rapture and Ryan's utopia was lost. 
from the proverbial ashes of Rapture's downfall rises your ability to play through a game as masterful as Bioshock. We could go on and on and on and on and on about how impressive the water physics were when it first released, but let's just say that they set the standard for many games today. Instead, we should really be focusing on the gameplay and the unforgettable story, which deliver a satisfying experience no matter how many years later you're playing it. Deep breath here, Bioshock is a survival horror role-playing FPS action-adventure sandbox hybrid that sprinkles in some science fiction and human drama for an incredible experience. <sighs> From your descent to the dystopian city to the narrative's big twist, Bioshock and even the rest of the series is the epitome of the near-perfect video game, even as time goes on. Number 3. The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim There's a clause in the gaming industry that if an Elder Scrolls game can be placed on a best of list, it must be on said list, and you also must mention how many times it's been re-released. Eight? Nine? Twenty-five? One of them's right. Joking aside, Skyrim earns its place, much like how Oblivion would have had Skyrim not existed. The expansive world of Skyrim, filled with dragons and all sorts of monstrosities and bandits, is one that people don't get tired of exploring. We know this for certain because, as of the writing of this list, there have been free DLC add-ons and many different versions of the game released, including a VR adaptation that came out six years after the game's original release. You can't go too far on a gaming subreddit without seeing your first Skyrim reference, and you can bet all the little jokes and memes that stem from the massive title will outlive even the next generation of gaming. All of the accolades the game has received came despite the many technical issues it faced, from erased save games to the general bugs expected from a Bethesda title. If that isn't a testament to how good the core game is, there may be no convincing you. Though Skyrim is definitely a game best played on PC, especially when you'll mod your game to the point of killing your computer, that doesn't diminish the fact that it remains one of the best PS3 games ever to release. It's just a shame that it's probably the last ever new Elder Scrolls game we'll see on PlayStation. Number 2. Red Dead Redemption Rockstar could have simply slapped a Wild West skin over Grand Theft Auto and called it a day, but the ambitious developer decided to put some hard work into Red Dead Redemption. While there are parallels in gameplay between the two series, John Marston's journey through the Old West is so much more than a GTA clone. Due to the game's setting, it has different pacing that may appeal to an audience more focused on story than random killing sprees. That's not to say it isn't still fun to ride into town on horseback and clear out as many people as possible, but it's not a core part of the overall experience. I mean, we spent dozens of hours just playing poker and cheating at poker. We're not bad people. Red Dead Redemption has a little more heart than the Grand Theft Auto series and utilises the story's more dramatic aspects better, making it easier to sympathise with a protagonist that may not be the most moral man on earth. Exploring the open prairies and snowy mountains of western United States and Mexico lend for some genuinely stunning settings for horse races, shootouts, and if you sprang for the Undead Nightmare DLC, which you really should, zombie slaying. So, question is, Red Dead 1 or 2? Or, if you're nuts, Revolver? Let us know down in the comments below. And number 1, it's of course Grand Theft Auto 5. After wowing audiences with Red Dead Redemption, Rockstar returned to the Grand Theft Auto series. While the attempt at setting the series in New York City worked for Grand Theft Auto 4, the development team decided to return to the west coast for the more familiar backdrops of San Andreas and Los Santos. Grand Theft Auto 5 is a technical marvel that clearly pushed the PS3 and Xbox 360 to their limits. The beautifully rendered and expansive open world is available to players from the get-go, allowing them to explore the inner city streets and the empty countryside at their leisure. Unique to the series is this shifting narrative, which puts three very different protagonists in the spotlight. Playing through each storyline means flipping between characters on the fly. At the height of some of the game's more exciting missions, switching between characters with the press of a button breaks up the gameplay, especially since each character has different stats and some abilities. When you're not engaged in the most in-depth Grand Theft Auto story to date, you can go on murderous killing sprees or load up Grand Theft Auto Online, where you're sure to be gunned down within minutes of dropping in. Well, you could have done that, but the servers were shut off not that long ago. Rest in peace, GTA Online on PS3. Only true legends remember how cursed that launch was. I must have got in that car with Lamar about 10 different times. Good times though, good times, simpler times. Hello, this is Jim Ryan, the head man of Sony. Please like and subscribe to Cultured Vulture's YouTube channel and you might win a PlayStation 5. Thank you. Definitely don't email me about making a new Resistance game. I'm so sick of it. Wink.
and thank you for watching. Again, I'm Jim Ryan, signing off. Goodbye.